DNA replication is a very complex process. DNA is essentially made up of nucleotides, which one by one attach to a single strand of DNA, which has been previously separated. So here we have nucleotides coming into this structure, which will make up DNA. So here, nucleotides coming in. Now, people proposed various models of DNA replication. Uh, some thought it was semi-conservative, some thought it was conservative, and others thought it was dispersive. They all start off with a parental strand, the original strand, like so. Semi-conservative works when a parental strand divides itself to make two new DNA strands. So here we can see that the red strand is a new strand. So there is half new and half original being produced for semi-conservative. Conservative works by duplicating its parental strand. So a full new double-stranded DNA is produced, leaving the original still the same. And the dispersive, the dispersive parental strand makes two new DNA strands by mixing up the original and the new strands. And these all are first generations. And essentially it's the same for the second generation, like so. But now we know that the semi-conservative model is the correct way of, for DNA replication. So just a quick overview. Here is a DNA strand. Now DNA replication begins at the origin of replication, somewhere along the DNA, on a specific gene sequence. When special proteins target this origin, origin of a replication, another special protein will begin twisting and unwinding the DNA, separating the two strands. The area where the DNA is getting unwound is called the replication force. Remember that on DNA, one strand has a 5' prime to 3' prime end, and the other, the opposite, has a 3' prime to 5' prime end. So let's take a closer look at the DNA strand being open. Here we have the sugar backbone and the bases. Here is the 5 end and 3 end, and the opposite, 5 here and 3 here. Essentially first, there is a protein which opens up and separates the two DNA strands, breaking the hydrogen bonds. I will call this protein the H protein. Now DNA is built always from a 5' prime to 3' prime end. This is important to understand. So here we have DNA being built from 5' end to 3' end by a protein called DNA polymerase. Obviously, the DNA can't be made from further up because the H protein here is blocking the site and the H protein makes the strand longer anyways. So here again we have DNA replication be from a 5' prime to 3' prime end. The same protein builds the new strand, polymerase. So as you can see, building always happens from a 5' prime to 3' prime end for the new strand. So how does DNA get built from where the H protein is? Because the H protein is always moving. Well, basically, for this, DNA is built in small fragments together with RNA. DNA polymerase builds these small DNA fragments, which are called Okazaki fragments. And so here again, we have polymerase building DNA in small fragments and traveling back and forth in the area. Note that it is still being built from a 5' prime to 3' prime end. Now let's look at this in a bit more detail by looking, by first looking at the key players, the key proteins in the DNA replication. So here we have DNA which has been unwound here and we'll zoom into this section here. So here we have the sugar backbone and the bases. The bases are attached through hydrogen bonds like so. Here we have the 3 prime end and the 5 prime end here. So it means the opposite for the other strand. The 3 here and the 5 here. The first protein we will talk about is helicase which unwinds the DNA breaking the hydrogen bonds of the bases. It begins in the origin of replication. So here we have helicase breaking the bonds. The next protein is a single stranded binding protein or SSBP. Just on a side note, normally when DNA strands are separated, they don't just stay straight because the bases on the strand want to interact with other bases on the same strand. 
So as you can see, the DNA strand here are bent and hydrogen bonds occur. These bendy bits and where the hydrogen bonds occur are called hairpins. What the single-stranded binding proteins do essentially is prevent these hairpins from forming, happening, and so keeps the single-stranded DNA straight, ready for replication. So here we have the single-stranded binding proteins binding to the single strand of DNA after being separated by helicase. Another important protein is DNA primase, also can be referred to as RNA primase. It is basically needed at the site where polymerase can begin replication. And polymerase, as mentioned earlier, is what makes the new strand here, polymerase, and so it builds DNA. So here we have DNA primase, and new strand of DNA is being built by DNA polymerase from a 5' prime to 3' prime direction, following helicase. DNA only builds from a 5' prime to 3' prime direction. It only builds from a 5' prime to 3' prime direction. So here we have nucleotides being added into this new strand, which is being, which is being added to a 3, 5 to 3' prime end. So how then can DNA build from a 3 to 5 prime direction on the opposite strand? So how can it? If, how can it build from here, 3? Well, it doesn't. It still builds from a 5 to 3 prime end. It does this with the help of DNA primase, which has another fundamental role in which it makes RNA primers, which are short RNA strands, sort of like templates. DNA primase attaches near where the helicase is and basically follows helicase backwards as it unwinds DNA. DNA primase makes these RNA primers shown here as blue strands. So, and there are gaps in between each RNA primer. And then DNA polymerase will build on these gaps near where DNA primase is. And these small DNA fragments which polymerase builds are called Okazaki fragments. So now on this strand we have RNA and DNA fragments, one after the other. I hope you got that. Let's look at it in a bit. Uh, let's look at it, let's look at it again. So here we have the two DNA strands here, the two strands here, five three prime end, five prime end on the top, and uh, five end here, and the three end on the bottom. It is getting unwound by helicase, breaking the bonds. SSB, single-stranded binding proteins, prevent hairpins to form. DNA polymerase builds new strands of DNA from a 5' prime to 3' prime end towards the helicase and just continues on with the helicase. This DNA polymerase is called polymerase 3. DNA primase or RNA primase builds RNA primers in segments. DNA polymerase, so here, RNA primers. DNA polymerase 3, abbreviated POL3, builds small DNA fragments called Okazaki fragments between the RNA primers. Another important protein which converts the RNA primers into DNA, DNA is called polymerase 1. So now it is all DNA strands with incomplete attachments. Because of such a complex process occurring down the bottom, the new strand being formed just with polymerase 3 is called the leading strand, while the strand which requires all these complex processes is called the lagging strand. Let's get the concept of the lagging strand in better detail. So here we have one DNA strand which has been separated by helicase. DNA primase moves backwards with the helicase and builds RNA primers, fragments of RNA shown here as blue strands. Then polymerase 3 comes along and builds small DNA fragments in between the RNA primers called Okazaki fragments. So now there are RNA primers and Okazaki fragments. Finally, the RNA primers then get converted 
by polymerase 1 into DNA fragments. So here polymerase 1 converting this RNA into DNA. However, these DNA fragments converted by polymerase 1 does not attach properly with DNA fragments from polymerase 3. And so these fragments form NICs, incomplete attachment sites. Well, there are proteins which seals these NICs off, which I will introduce uh, in a bit. So again, the helicase unwinds the DNA, breaking the hydrogen bonds. SSBP then attaches to the single strands and prevents them from forming hairpins. Polymerase 3 builds a new strand by adding nucleotides from a 5 to 3 prime direction. So here we have nucleotides coming in to build, being built by polymerase 3. DNA primase makes RNA primers bit by bit as it travels backwards with the helicase. So here RNA primers. And at the same time, polymerase 3 fills in these small gaps with small DNA fragments called Okazaki fragments. The RNA primer previously made by DNA primase are then converted by polymerase 1 into DNA. So RNA primer is converted into DNA by this orange polymerase 1. NICs are formed in between the pole 1 and pole 3 DNA fragments. Finally, a special protein called DNA ligase, drawn in green, seals off the NICs, making a stable new DNA strand. So here is a leading strand, as mentioned, and here is a lag lagging strand. What's important to know is that what we d discussed all along was actually DNA replication of E. coli. E. coli DNA replication is better understood than replication of eukaryotic cells. But what is the difference? Well, it is essentially the same, supposedly, but with different names of proteins. So let's look at it. Let's look at both of them. So the one on the left is prokaryotic, and the one on the right is eukaryotic. Helicase is the same for both types of cells. It unwinds the DNA strands, breaking the hydrogen bonds. Polymerase 3 is known as polymerase delta in eukaryotes and builds DNA strands from 5 to 3 prime direction. SSBP are known as replication factor A or RPA in eukaryotes. It prevents hairpin formation. DNA primase, so DNA primase is called polymerase alpha and makes RNA primers the same. So here it makes RNA primers. Polymerase 1 it, it's called, is, is MF1 in eukaryotes, then converts RNA primers into DNA. So here we have polymerase 1 converts RNA primers into DNA. And not shown in this diagram, but ligase 1, with the same name as prokaryote, seals the NICs formed by polymerase, uh, by del polymerase delta and polymerase 1, uh, or MF1, sorry. So here is the lagging and leading strand. I hope that that made sense, and I hope you understood that. Please comment and like and tell me what you think um, and I'll leave you with the name the different types of proteins for both prokaryotes and eukaryotes thank you